I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Oops Podcast. Julio Gallarotti here. How you doing, everybody? I'm joined by Ryan Lynch. How you doing, my friend? Pretty good. Pretty looking good. good. Looking good. Thank you. Um, I'll see you guys tonight at the stand. Show's sold out. Really excited about that. Uh, so it should be a hot one. And we got some special guests showing up. Uh, looking forward to seeing you there. Also, last weekend of September, I'm at the House of Comedy in Detroit. Uh, and then October 14th, two shows at Hereafter at the Crocodile in Seattle, Washington. And... November 10th, Coastal Creative, St. Pete, Florida, adding some more dates. Uh, got a couple of cities high on the list. I, and I'm going to stop just saying places that I'm probably coming because it's just jinxes it and makes it take forever. So the cities that you guys have been hitting me up about, I'm planning on trying to come to all of them. Uh, I got the agents working hard. Uh, so looking forward to it. Ryan, how's uh, how's your summer going, dude? It's going well. We were just talking about the weather. It's been really cool. Yeah. Weather's been out good. the last couple of nights. Yeah. Went out to get some food in a, in a sweatshirt, and that was nice. Very nice, dude. Very nice. Love to see that. <laughs> How's your summer? It's okay. I've been sort of like, you know, we've been grinding, keeping the pod, keeping the pod ripping, which has been awesome, and uh, I'm really trying to get my Afghanistan stuff out there. You know, it's such a, it's a beefy watch. You know what I mean? It's long, it's dense, and everybody's working through it, and I'm appreciating you guys sending me all the nice feedback. Um, it's been really, really great uh, to see everybody like it. You know what I mean? So anyway, but like while I'm wrapping my head around all these plans and stuff, I'm sort of like I've devolved into this old version of myself that is like not good necessarily where I'm just like anxious and like thinking about stuff all the time, like trying to get my shit popping mm. and like I'm going to bed late, which is kind of bad. I'm waking up. I'm having trouble waking up and then I'm pale as fuck, dude. It's like the middle of the summer and I'm white as a ghost you know i forget what they called you back in the day but albino <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna reclaim it we're the albine bros the albine bros we just shouldn't we should we should get some color we gotta get some color but we're working hard it's okay yeah. but dude like i find do you ever do this like for some reason like i'm about to go to bed um and suddenly i become a fucking researcher <laughs> i become a professional researcher yeah to a degree Dude, I jotted down some of the thing because the, the thoughts will spiral. Suddenly, I need to look up the most random shit of all time. I'll be watching like tennis highlights. I'm like, huh, I wonder how much money, career prize money Roger Federer has made. Google it. His net worth comes up instead of his career prize money. I'm like, oh, I need to distinguish between those two things. So I'm going to look. I look even further. And then from there, I'm like, you know what? How old is Bad Bunny? He's got to be like 29. Eh. I look that up. Then it's like, uh, where is he from in Puerto Rico? And then I'm like, oh, huh, what's the per capita income of that area? I'm like, oh, he worked in a grocery store. Then I'm like, do they have stop and shop in Puerto Rico? Near stop and shop near me. Do they have stop and shop in New York City? And then I'm like, huh, why doesn't Ramadan start on the same time every year? <laughs> why is that? I then Google that, go into a deep dive about that. And then I'm like, when is Labor Day? What is Labor Day? Why is it called Labor Day? Let's see how many views my Afghanistan video has. And then it's just like a circle. And before you know it, I've done two hours of completely worthless research that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then I can't sleep. And once you, I've noticed that once you extend the window, like if you're exhausted and you could easily just fall asleep, if you're awake for three more hours for some reason, your next day you're going to be tired waking up. Yeah. Victoria and I like to refer to that part of the sleeping process as catching a wave. They come in cycles, and it's kind of like a surfer catching the perfect yeah. wave. And she'll tell me, she's like, Ryan, I'm about to catch a wave. And I'm like, okay, good night. Oh, and nice, dude. so then I, you know, I'm paddling all night, which is really just scrolling <laughs> on TikTok um, or, or dicking around. Paddling. And uh, hey. if you don't get on uh, the surfboard and ride that wave, it could take 15, 20 to an hour before another good one comes. You're out so there I waiting feel for the wave. That. Absolutely. Totally, dude. Like, there's been times where at 6 p.m. I'm a man. I could go to bed right now, and then I'm up till 4 in the morning. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, it was terrible. When you're posting stuff, do you, you know, you said, like, you're just thinking about it all the time. Do you get out of bed and go to your laptop and just start no. Although, looking at analytics and checking things and making sure that uploads go smooth and then mm, getting lost from there? Well, I know it's sounding like you do that. And yeah. I know you, you're the one who's kind of like responsible for all that stuff, uh, for at least for the oops. So I understand why you would be doing that. 
I don't as much because I can usually check most of it on my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try not to get out of bed, but I don't know. But like sometimes I'll have something on in the background. I can't really watch. I can't have TV on where there's a story unfolding because I start picking up on the story and that distracts me and keeps <laughs> me awake. Mm-hmm. Like if I put tennis on and put the sleep timer on, I can usually fall asleep. And then when I'm about to fall asleep, I'll just like find the remote and like turn the TV off if I don't fall asleep first. Um, but like, yeah, like if there's a real show on, which by the way, thank you all of our listeners who gave us feedback about, I think you should leave. There are a lot of women out there watching the show and enjoy it. So you guys all have good taste. Great taste. Um, but yeah, dude, I don't, I, I try not to get out of bed because it's dangerous, but I don't know. At the end of the day, if I get into this sort of cycle, that's when I leave the phone out of the room sometimes yeah. and that will help a lot. Um, and I'm also just trying to remember, dude, that in the most, be- in the best way possible, like none of the shit, none of it matters, dude. You know what I mean? Like I try not to get too stressed out about the shit because at the end of the day, it's so minuscule mm-hmm. what it is that we're doing. And that doesn't mean that what we're doing is worthless, but it's going to happen anyway. You know what I mean? Like you just deal, just deal with it. It's okay. Like there's no point. And I know that emotions don't always make sense, but there is no point in getting stressed out about stressful shit. How often are you looking at it? At a macro level like that, though, N- uh, not often, but I try to remind myself. Like any time that I get discouraged or any time that I get stressed, when I have the wherewithal to kind of take a step back and be like, "Okay, it's okay. Like this, this is how it is. Like your life isn't going to be perfect, and if it was, you'd find things wrong with it. Still, mm-hmm. you'd f- you'd suddenly be annoyed about stupid shit. So, like, just as things pop up, just be patient, deal with them, take a deep breath, uh, take your time, don't rush. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm typically able to come back to that to some degree. Like if I'm having a bad day, like recently I was having a bad day. I forget what was happening. Like I was, nothing was going right for me. You know what I mean? And within a couple hours I was able to be like, all right, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like good for you. You don't need, I don't know. I believe in what I do. I, I like what I do. You know what I mean? And that, that should be enough, you know? Um, well let's, let's pivot into something a little lighter. So this week's segment of Are You a Turkey? Okay, let's hear it. We may have witnessed some turkeys in the wild. Uh, and we'll give you an example and then sort of like example, uh, more, uh, more examples as to how you might know if you are indeed being one. I was at the sauna, the gym, and I go in there and it's a very crowded sauna, okay? There's a bunch of towels up in this like above area. There's like the, the top level and the bottom level, right? Mm-hmm. So I sit on the lower level because I'm like, I don't want to sit on these towels that whoever, whatever asshole left in here. The, a person then comes in and is like, excuse me, like, excuse me, mate. And I have to now move over so he can come and sit back in the area where his towels were, which to begin with is a turkey move. Don't leave the fucking place, dude. This is a communal thing. That's like when people are at the gym and they're like super setting and they use one machine and mm. another machine and they expect you to know that they're still using. I have one more set. No, you don't. You're over there, dude. You don't have another set. Yeah. And this is when it becomes really an alpha male fight or flight situation where it's like, if this guy's bigger than me, I actually am more likely to back down. Mm-hmm. Which is very primal moments. Anyway, so this guy decided to reserve this area of an already completely crowded sauna where I only had one area to sit and he's now moving me over. That's annoying as fuck. He then proceeds to start having a conversation with his boy about cars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He goes, yeah, Porsche, the Porsche is my favorite. He's some, this Australian bro. And he's like, yeah, he's like, but the problem is, honestly, you can't even really drive fast anymore. He's, he's like, I mean, the highest I can really get it up without whatever. He's like, it's about like 110. I'm like, dude, ugh, you're such a fucking... His boy starts talking about Teslas and he's like, oh man. He's like, fuck that. Fuck Teslas. And then he, they start talking about decorating, how he's decorating his house. He goes, <laughs> I'll let my wife do it as long as she stays within the budget. That's all I care about. As long as you stay within the budget, you do whatever you want. Multiple things stand out to me here. First of all, the reserving of the space when no one has allowed you to do that. So that's step one. Step two, having conversation about cars with other people nearby when it's quiet time. That is just like such a silly conversation to be having in public, in my opinion. And then further, talking about how this fucking ball and chain is decorating. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, what a fucking turkey. So how do we quantify being a turkey? What are the three, what are the things that we need to assess based off of those three separate things that happened? It's hard to put one's thumb on what it is specifically, but it can just be anytime you're being a tool bag in public. Tool bag. 
or in private, but it's obviously it's hard for me to spot if you're doing it, if I'm not around. Yeah. So just don't be a turkey, dude. We're all walking around the earth together. We, we should agree to make it pleasant for all of us. This isn't your place, bro. Yeah. Do what you want in your house with your wife overseeing the budget, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fucking complete piker move, bro. Now, if the, here's the other problem with this story. Well, not with this story, but with this theme is like on the topic of being a turkey, sometimes one doesn't know that they're being a turkey and you might actually be not being a dick or a, or a loser. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you might be being a loser. I don't know. I'm just like throwing these terms around. But okay, I made a potential turkey move here and we can discuss whether or not I did in fact do that. Please share. So one of our sponsors, right? Uh... I got connected with is an, an old sponsor who we're not really, who's not currently in the, in the roster, but I got connected on an email and the guy invited me down to come check it out. He goes, come, come on down and check it out. We'll give you a tour. I said, okay, cool. The address was in the place was in, in the email. Mm-hmm. So I take that as being, inv- I th- I've been invited. And what, what exactly did he say? Let's look. Let's look specifically at what was said because this this you know, we can't we can't read the the tone or the inflection but let's see here a comma could go a long way so this is the this is the email okay okay um he goes we should definitely talk maybe come by for blank we're always here if you need blank or if you just want to come by or bring friends we can take you on a tour of the facility signed by the guy. With the address of the place, okay? Mm -hmm. Address of the place. I then reply, I would love to come by this week or next. Let me know if there are any good times that work and thank you. Okay, so I don't think he replied to that. Mm -hmm. So I go to find the place. It's actually not that easy to find them. Well, I'm looking around. I'm trying to find it. Um, Taking that original email as sort of like a a general invite. Come through. We're here. Cool. I will. I, I end up kind of going down the wrong way. I'm looking for a while. I'm on foot walking for like, I go to the wrong place two or three times and, but it's in this one area. So I'm like, okay. And I eventually figure it out. I get to the security gate and the guy goes, who are you here to see? I tell him, he goes, do you have a meeting? I say, well, not formally, but here's my email with the guy. I show it to him. He goes, okay, you're good. It's right over there. I walk over, I walk in, I kind of get in there. It's sort of like, there's no real like greeting area. I'm sort of like looking around and somebody comes up to me and they go, can I help you? And I say, I'm here to see so-and-so. And they go, oh, okay. Um, is he expecting you? And I was like, well, he told me to come by. So she, I see her like walk eight feet to the guy who I've never actually met in person and tell him, he kind of looks at me, looks back down. Okay. I go sit, whatever. I'm like, every, every time I'm like, did I? I'm like, no. I did what I was told to do. I'm being persistent. I'm doing what they say is good, right? He comes over and he's like, hey, he's like, how did you get in here? <laughs> and I go, what, I, well, I taught the security person, let me in. I told him that you told me to come. And he's like, oh, so I immediately get it. And I'm like, dude, sorry. Uh, I, I didn't mean to just ambush you. I, I just... I thought that you were inviting me to come in. I'd be happy to schedule time another time. Sorry about that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no worries. I just thought, you know, I'm busy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no, totally. totally." And then I've I've like followed up a couple of times, nothing. (laughs) Which makes it, I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's hard to like, and I would argue that I was unfortunately a turkey in this situation. I... Yes, but not not in a bad way. There's nothing you could do there. He gave you four options in the email. Four options. You took one of them. Yeah, and the address was, is in the email. Well, yeah, four options. Come with friends. Come hang out. Come stop by. For blank. For blank. <laughs> and, then, and then there was a, another one. You took one of the options. I would be in such a pool of anxiety if I had to deal with that. I was really stressed out. And getting home and, and everything. I'm sorry that happened to you, but... If you're, it's not, it's not turkey behavior. So I would argue that not knowing, not f- feeling out the vibe properly is potentially turkey behavior. It's Turkish. Even, it's Turkish. <laughs> Despite one being well-intentioned, you can be well-intentioned and even like not do anything that is particularly wrong, but be a turkey still. Here's an example of being a turkey. I went to visit my friend in college when I had graduated, okay? It was, 
I was I just graduated. He was a senior, and uh, you know, you're you're not you're still like freshly removed up from college that it's like fun to go back. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You're still transitioning into your new life. I'm pretty sure I slept with my tennis racket in my bed for like the first couple months when I had like a job and I was living in the city. I was like pretty bummed out. Um, so I go back to visit and I get like too fucked up one night. I don't know what I did or like I took something or something. And the thing that was brutal about this was that there was a girl who I really wanted to, to hang out with. And I fell asleep early the night on one of the two nights. She was texting me the whole night being like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And this was a girl who was like out of my league. And then by the time I'm now, I had to kind of, I guess, progressed to a place where it was no longer the case. Mm. We ended up spending some time together later on, like six months down the road. But like, I completely blew it there. I passed out in my friend's bed and like him and his boys were like chilling in the other room and I was like snoring or some shit. And then I like texted him and his roommates, like, thanking them for letting me stay and they like didn't respond to me or something Mm. and it just felt so beat dude yeah getting too fucked up is turkey behavior that's turkey behavior that one's turkey behavior that was really bad the jury's out but yeah Colorado just taking l's for a lifetime dude and i'll tell you it's amazing oh you it's sad that one really remembers these moments i need to work on this this is helping me saying this stuff out loud because like anytime i've done something really embarrassing like that it haunts me yeah. And even like I, I had the DJ story. I like DJ at a party and fucked up the music and like people were so disappointed in me. They were just looking at me like Can you refresh us on that one? I like DJ'd some Halloween party. I was like trying to be a DJ. I <laughs> dude, it was so stupid. Like I was twenty three. I wanted to be a comedian and a DJ. Like clearly two two things. That's why like if Very your boy sweet. if your boy is starting out being a comedian, give him a little bit of slack because you, you embarrass yourself the first couple of years you do comedy. I had a card a glossy card with my headshot on it and I'd give it to people and they would just look at me and laugh. So like, you know, you do embarrassing shit. So I decided I was going to be a comedian and a DJ, two things that very clearly are uh, conflicting with each other, Mm -hmm. being that they are done at the same time. (laughs) You know what I mean? They're done around the same time. Uh, So I don't know what made me think that. So I didn't know any DJs. I didn't know anything about DJing. My friend had this like big DJ thing that was like not what real DJs use, but it was like, it was effectively like a fancy toy. Okay. And I learned how to use it. I was making mixes and like I went and DJed this party and I like brought that with me and like everybody running the party <laughs> were like looking at me like I was a fucking loser. And I was like, well, this is, dude, I know. So like we try to set it up, it ends up not working. So I need to use the guy's like existing setting. So I, com- I connect my computer and the music just like keeps going out. First of all, I'm... Pl- <laughs> And this is like a big party and like f- like fancy people who are like cool, cool, too cool for school people. They wanted like European poolside house day party music. And I just wasn't in, I wasn't in, <laughs> dude, I, I couldn't connect with the idea that like music isn't objectively good. So if I really liked something, it didn't mean that everybody was going to jam out to it the same way I was. So I was playing like Steve Aoki, like electro oh. mixes. And like the guy would come over and be like, dude, stop playing electro. I'm like, what do you mean? Like it's, so this is before the music even started cutting out. So dude, then like the music would cut out, they'd fix it. And the same song would play that I'd already played. Like, dude, it was really bad. So they end up like replacing me. They take, they, they take the downstairs guy, bring him upstairs. They send me downstairs and they basically just give me a CD to play like on repeat. Never DJ it again. Mm. After that, it was too traumatizing. Can I ask how they approached you? To do the party? No, to get off the stage. They basically were just like, dude, there, there's like technical difficulties here. There's specific people where I'll never forget the look in their eyes. <laughs> like people who I'm like sort of friends with, well, I'll never forget. And the amount of shame I have for that, dude. Yeah. And the, the, the amount of shameful things there are, it's a long list. I just didn't know. And it's amazing how sometimes something can seem so simple. Like the information was so available about how to do that properly. And somehow I was unable to find it. And I want, that's like a a personality flaw that I have. (laughs) Like I get shy, dude. Yeah, I'm a shy person sometimes. Like 
Or did I talk about the 4th of July? I talked about that, right? They had a fireworks party on the top floor or whatever at some guy's apartment. I was too shy to go, dude. No. <laughs> I think I maybe I forget if I talked about it. But sometimes, dude, it's like hard, man. Like networking can be hard for me. Like, I don't know. But anyway, so these are all turkey moments where I was like, I was a martyr mm. for the good turkeys versus the bad turkeys. We might be onto something there with that. Yeah. Australian guy in the sauna, bad turkey. Julio, bright, eye, bright eyed, pulling up, being like, oh, I, I, I wanted to discuss brand partnerships. And the guy being like, how the fuck did you get in here? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, the security guy let me right in. I'm like, I'm like Elf. Elf is a turkey. He's a nice turkey, mm-hmm. no, but nonetheless a turkey. Uh, <laughs> I might have a turkey. You got uh, one for I, me? I have to ask if it's a turkey. Okay. So I was at the... I was. <laughs> Am I a turkey? Are you? Was Ryan a turkey? I don't know if, if I was the turkey or this guy was a turkey, but I was at the 9-11 Museum this past weekend. Okay. <laughs> it's such a <laughs> great museum. It was awesome. Um, so you actually went in and you weren't just like looking at the memorial or whatever? No, I've been to the memorial a couple times, but okay. we had... Uh, Vic's cousin was in town, so he wanted to check out the museum. It was sick. It was great. Definitely check it out. But my biggest takeaway was this terrible uh, incident... I go into the bathroom. Um, it's right outside a theater where they're showing a couple of short 15, 20 minute films. And I go to go to the bathroom. I really had to tinkle and there was a long line inside. And there were people like so much so that the line kind of started at the beginning of the door. So someone would push the door open and realize that they can't go in. So they waited outside. So the line was outside of the bathroom as well. That's often for the ladies' room, but this is the men's room. And so I'm in there, and I'm waiting, and there's only two stalls, and it's very tight. And I, it's my turn t- to go to the urinal, and I'm standing there, and I get pee shy. Do you ever get pee shy? <laughs> I don't. It's I, one of the most alpha things about me, dude. I don't get pee shy. I, d- I don't. <laughs> that's pretty alpha. I don't to pivot either. to the right. I just let it fucking rock there, and I sit there, and I'll fucking, I'll even hold it with my left hand if there's a guy to the right of me. I want him to see. Good for you, dude. I want him to watch. So I'm standing there, and it's like this <laughs> mental barrier that you have to get over within, and you know within the first two seconds whether or not you're going to be able to pee. So I don't, dude, I don't relate to this, but it's it's interesting to hear somebody afflicted so, with such a specific problem. Yeah, something happened at a Yankee game I went to when I was a kid. Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if I blocked it out, but it was like 18 empty stalls. I'm in stall number two. Guy had 16 other options, chose stall number three. I, something happened. When you were a child? Yeah, 2004. Jesus. But I don't think anything happened, but I remember that happened. And then since then I'm pee shy. So my grandpa said, it's okay. Boys can be pee shy. And so I, uh, I'm standing there and within the first two seconds, I'm like, fuck, I'm not gonna be able to pee. And I just can't go. And it's just blocked. It's just blocked. The pipes are are blocked and I'm standing there and I hear this guy behind me kind of (sighs) go because there are now, how many stalls are there again? Just two. Okay. There's now two people that have gone pee and left since I've gotten into stall number two. And uh, this guy just mumbled under his breath to like maybe his son. He's like, this guy's taking forever. Oh, God. And so I, you know, I'm trying to also be courteous and like, I understand like, hey, I can't get the job done. I'm going to get out of here in a minute. <laughs> but I also wanted him to know. I wanted everyone to know I'm not playing on my phone. So I put my hands behind my back. <laughs> I still couldn't pee. And then I came to the, the, the realization. I'm like, you're not going to get the job done. And so I zipped up and I walked out. And that's so embarrassing, just walking out of the bathroom. But nobody knows you didn't pee. Did you at least, did you at least flush? No, no, because it's motion sensor. Nothing came out. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um, and then, yeah, I think, I, I don't know if I'm the turkey or if no, the guy dude, that mumbled not, under his breath no, is the turkey. dude, you're not a turkey I get shy, too. I get you shy shouldn't too. be fucking... I mean, listen, I, <laughs> I, I get being frustrated when people take a long time, but it's different if like you just can't pee. You know what I mean? Like If, if you can't figure out how to use the self-checkout at CVS, that's annoying. But like you, you're trying to pee, dude. I don't know. You're a young man. You know what I mean? If anything, that's sad. <laughs> that you're blocked like that. You should get a prostate exam, bro. Make sure the pipes are working. <laughs> I, I have. Suddenly yeah. you're like, oh my God, yeah, you have about I've, this problem? Uh, not this particular problem, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if I'm the turkey. If I am, I, I'm sorry to the guy that needed a few extra, needed me to be done sooner. <laughs> Dude, I'm but. sorry. That's tough. Guys, if you're generally concerned about uh, your hair volume, uh, thinning hair, just overall hair health, uh, Nutrafol is here to help you. Um, I personally have not experienced any sort of Uh, issues with that, but I've been told that in my genetics, it is there. So my whole life, I've been very 
concerned about it in general. Uh, so I've really enjoyed using the Nutrafol Scalp Care. Uh, that's for people who want to optimize their hair health. It is a uh, great option for promoting healthy hair, thick, voluminous hair. Uh, but it goes beyond that. Like if you've experienced any sort of thinning or you're concerned about being able to see too much of your scalp, or if you think that the process is, is beginning as, as your hair situation is start, starting to slightly deteriorate, uh, we think Nutrafol potentially has you covered. To promote and improve hair growth, uh, Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve hair growth, visible thickness, and strength. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning stress hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, metabolism, uh, through whole body health. Uh, so it's sort of like a full, full on, uh, kind of taking of the pulse of what's going on with your hair to try to make sure that it can promote, uh, a healthy situation there for you. You go to Nutrafol.com to take their hair health wellness quiz, identify the causes of your thinning hair and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through the whole, through whole body wellness which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and thinning hair is different for men and women. Nutrafol has multiple unique formulas to provide exactly what their body and hair growth uh, needs might be based on biology, age, and other lifestyle factors. So right now, you can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off of your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code OOPS you can find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. That's Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code OOPS. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code OOPS. Speaking of shy, though, I, I, I thought of this the other day. I do feel like, me personally, before COVID, I was a much more social person, especially in settings with people that I didn't really know. And I think COVID, you know, being so isolated, I feel like people have developed a little, a lot more anxiety in social settings, even though, you know, we're a couple years out by now. I feel like I've lost a couple of some really valuable skills that I had prior to COVID. Really? When it comes to those events. I don't know. I, I just, I tend to, when you were talking about um, being at uh, the, was it Tim Dillon's party? Just mm -hmm. being a little anxious and shy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not like hiding in the corner like the uh, the girl from the Blair Witch Project yeah. facing the corner, <laughs> but I do tend to, to find myself, you know, trying to find a buddy to cling yeah, to. Yeah, totally. So. Well, that dude, I think it's really important to go to a party with somebody that you feel comfortable standing next to in silence. Yeah. I think that that is like uh, a very important thing because otherwise, what are you going to do? How many times are you going to go to the bathroom? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's a great, that's a great point. How many cigs are you going to smoke? Like, yeah. well, like, like excuses to act like you're on the move to doing something because in reality, <laughs> acting like you're, doing you're on nothing. the move is such a good point. You're constantly in transit at the party, putting gum in a wrapper and then walking it to the bathroom yeah. trash can. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't, so you need, you need the unit. Yeah. I was always impressed. Like, and, and and by having the unit, you really do insulate yourself from having a lot of these problems. Guys who pull up with a crew, they never have to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, I'm sort of like flying solo to stuff, and I'm just kind of like, oh, God, fucking, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know, dude. It's crazy. That's a good point. Wait, um, wait, what did you say, though? What do you mean? Aiming to do something? We can cut this, but what, what was the phrase that you said? Aiming to trying to look like you're doing something important. Yeah. What what was it though that you in said? transit? Yeah. You're constantly in transit to looking like you're doing something important because <laughs> you're funny, you're embarrassed that you have no one to talk to and nothing to do. <laughs> that's oh, that's funny. Because otherwise, dude, when you're in these like when you're when you're initiating conversations with other people, you then have to figure out how to gracefully exit the conversation, mm -hmm. and it's a constant battle of like, are they going to try to exit the conversation first, or am I going to do it? And am I going to turn into the guy who's talking to this guy too much? Yeah, I don't know. Forget. I was at I was at Pete's uh, after party for Bubkiss when I came out, and you know, there's a bunch of famous people at the party, whatever. And I'm talking to a couple of these people, and a lot of them are you know bigger, much bigger people than me. You know what I mean? And we're talking, and I think the conversation's going well, and then suddenly the person is like, you know what? I gotta like, I gotta find my friend. I'll, I'll be I'll be back. I just. And I'm like, oh God, am I the guy who's like talking this guy's ear off? Mm. You know what I mean? But I don't know. These LA people, man, they're so full of fucking shit. Like you'll, you'll be, you know, 
they'll tell you you're the greatest person in the world. They think everything you've done is the greatest thing in the world. And then you're like, oh, wow, that was great. And then, you know, you hit them up and they don't reply to you. You know what I mean? So it's like, mm-hmm. it's a, it's an interesting thing. And it's a lot like tennis, dude. I was thinking about this. That kind of stuff, when you're like collaborating with people or even with podcasts, it's like, you know, I want to have big guests on my podcast, right? People who are like, you know, uh, developing talents even more so than I am who want to come on the pod who were like, you know, we're in a crucial time of the pod. Like we need to keep our numbers up. Like by having big guests on, it makes our YouTube numbers good, which is good, which makes our sponsors happy. Like these are all important things. So like, while I want to have some certain people on, I like don't feel like I can yet because I want to make sure our numbers are really good. It's a lot like tennis. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play with somebody who sucks. But somebody who's better than me doesn't want to play with me either. It's hard to find the perfect partner for that kind of shit. And in LA, you're constantly running into that socially because it's really hard to decouple your social life from your professional life. Everybody's well aware that if you become friends with the right guy, that guy can just choose to put you in shit and it can change your life. So why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you constantly be networking? So I think part of that is why LA can be so lonely. And it's honestly why I like New York a little bit better. It's like the industry isn't everywhere and why that can be a downside because there's less opportunities sometimes, you know what I mean? As far as like, oh, you should connect with this guy and connect with that guy and blah, blah, blah. Like there isn't as much of that because there's so many more like professionals here as opposed to like entertainment hustlers and hackers like there are in LA and like all that, all that shit. But I like it better because you can make real connections with people. Mm-hmm. I cannot fake it, dude. I, I just can't do it. I'm a nice guy, but I can't manufacture friendships with people because I want to get ahead. So any person who comes on this pod where I'm like, this person's my friend, like that's some, that's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? That sounds tiring to yeah. just try to manufacture relationships like that. I know. And, and I, I see people do it gracefully and do it well in a way where I'm not even like mad at them. I'm like, oh, this guy actually means it. Like mm-hmm. he is actually friends with that guy and he doesn't th- he's not like double kind of thinking about his intentions mm-hmm. and whether or not they're good or not. You know just I mean? an authentic person. And yeah. that's... In, that's so valuable. I mean, yeah. Well, I appreciate and that's that. That's so valuable. I'm not that trying to. That is so valuable. <laughs> that was corny. Uh, Thanks, no, Father agree. Ryan. I, but yeah, the, good point. But yeah, man. And, and I, I know we talked about this on the last episode, and I don't want to harp on this forever and have this be the thing that I'm talking about. But I, I love exploring, and I love the different things that places have to offer. For, for me, LA, one of the best things about LA, there's a couple of them. First of all, there's so many daytime activities in Southern California in general that are so fun. I understand why people don't drink as much because there's so much to look forward to during the day. Hiking is so amazing. And like what out West hiking is much different than hiking here. And for me, the difference is that you can see at the horizon, you can see so deep and so far. That's so fun to me. Like the kind of dense greenery hike of the upstate New York has to offer while it's still fun. It's like not quite as satisfying for me as like the open Griffith park fucking situation hike. You know what I mean? I love that. There's the healthy lifestyle out there in general is so amazing. Like, healthy food is everywhere and it's affordable. There's like Chipotle priced healthy food option. I know that Chipotle is like a healthier option compared to some of the other fast food shit we have in in New York, but there's like an abundance of healthy food. Mm -hmm. I always joke that when you step off the plane in LA, you're, you lose 10 pounds without even trying. (laughs) It's incredible. And you automatically have a glow up by going there. So to me, that's, that's the key. But to me, the culture is a little lacking. Like it is hard to find critical thinkers out there in LA specifically. I find Hmm. like you'll, you'll, okay, here's an example. I was at a grocery store. I go to the cold bar and I put some olives in a little container and I then go to buy, to, to check out. I put the olives on the thing and the guy goes, that's the guy goes, that is the hot food container. And I said, I know, but it's, uh, but why does it matter? He goes, because that's for hot food. It's not for cold food. I go, okay, but why can't you, you know, select the container? I know you can do that there. You can select, you know, tear. So it counts, it, it cancels mm-hmm. out the weight and you could just ring it up as a hot, as a hot thing. And it wouldn't make a difference because it's the same pricing per pound. He goes, I know, but that's for hot food. He just couldn't understand what I was talking about. Turkey. Because <laughs> big time. <laughs> but that is like, the, that is an LA thing to me. And I'm not saying it about all of LA, but like there is a lot of lack. It's almost like the sun has like fried people's brains in a way where like they're just not as capable of 
critical thinking. However, on the on the bright side of them, no pun intended, with the sun, people are much more positive, and fr- I would say much friendlier on the surface than they are in New York. I would say people in New York are more sincere. People in LA are much more pleasant to interact with, typically, but they're just way more like flaky, mm. you know. And I know this is like a stereotype. Everybody talks about this, but it's like, you know, you'll meet a guy who's a who's a, a movie producer apparently, but he's an Uber driver and you're, you're, you're like, okay, dude. Yeah, sure. Like people are just kind of like full of shit and who knows that guy might end up becoming the greatest. He might end up becoming Jerry Bruckheimer for all I know, but, but people seem to kind of be full of it. And, uh, I think, I think that a lot of the time they are. So they have the friendliness, whatever. The thing I love about the South dude is the South is just really like friendly, like legit to the point where like, if you know, if you're in subway and you're ordering a sandwich, and the person's like, hey, how are you? How's your day going today? Like, that's fucking normal. You know what I mean? Can you imagine a person here doing that? What kind of bread? What kind of meat? Like, What ne- do you want? Dude, the P- New York City employees are some of the most apathetic, emotionless people I've ever seen in my life. No smile. No nothing. Yeah, how can I have? It's like crazy. Customer service on a daily. You better be ready to fucking not be smiled at here, dude. It's brutal. But people are helpful. You know, if they see an old lady fall, they'll run and help her. I'm sure everywhere, hopefully they would. But, you know, hopefully you know what I mean by that. I think that people here have good hearts. They're just cynical. The city is really heavy. It really wears you down. Um, but down south, bro, if, if if someone were to start a conversation like that with you at Subway while you're getting your food made and you were, like, not responsive, they'll be, like, taken aback by that. I got a good recommendation for you guys. Next time you're in Mississippi... We had somebody ask about Mississippi uh, because they're from there and they're curious about what I had to say about it. But some of the places that I visited in Mississippi that I really liked, I was in Natchez, uh, which has a bunch of great national park historical sites uh, that are pretty interesting and pretty cool. There's a really beautiful parkway. Uh, I think it's called the Natchez Trace Parkway or something, Natchez Scenic. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful drive, no trucks allowed, uh, really off the beaten path kind of situation. Uh, recommend that Vicksburg is super cool. So ran in the Mississippi, uh, ran the border of Louisiana, but shout out to Hans for putting this on my radar. There's a steakhouse called Doe's eat place. Uh, I believe there's a few more locations now throughout the South, but the OG one is in Greenville, Mississippi. Good luck getting there. It's sort of kind of deep in the Delta and it's in this sort of nondescript shack looking like setup where you're kind of unclear if it's even open approaching this, this dozy place, the, the neighborhood starts to kind of improve. I've heard people sort of say that it's a little sketchy and that there's like, so that may or may not be true. I, I don't really remember, but it's a really charming little place. You'll eat kind of one of the meanest steaks you'll ever have in your life. I remember having like a two pound ribeye that blew my, blew my socks off <laughs> and you'll just be surrounded by like fat Southern people having the best meal of their life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, you know, like fancy Southern people like, Oh, we're celebrating. I'm not doing the accent, but like we're celebrating Jimbo's birthday here. He or he just graduated from high school. He's going to state to play football. Whatever, fucking old Miss. Uh, that is me just using stereotypes. I mean, that didn't accurately represent what's happening. But just like big steak loving men in there, and you know you're getting a good meal. You go get yourself a tamale, have a nice beer, get a steak, uh, get the fries, get the salad. And I, you know Hans told me this. Shout out Hans, my boy. Uh, but apparently, like Jerry Jones, the owner of the of the Cowboys, will park his private plane and go pick up steaks from the OG Doe's uh, before continuing on his way. So if you find yourself in Mississippi, worth seeking that out. Um, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, and a lot of the time, dude, I I wish that the economics of performing in sort of like smaller markets made more sense because I would love to be the you know catch Galarati this weekend in Missoula, Montana. Or wherever, and I'm sure that maybe there's a bigger group of people there. But just like places where there aren't a lot of people, you know, what I mean, how often do you see comedians going to Wyoming? Mm-hmm. I think Wyoming is the least populated state, and if not, it's in the top two or three. Um, I forget the updated total. I want to say 590 thousand people or something. You've been good with these before. Yeah. Um, but like, how sick would that be? Or performing just like random ass places, Colorado, tour the Balkans, catch me in Sofia, Bulgaria on Monday. Uh, you know, Pristina, Kosovo, the the week after, you know, I don't know, whatever. So how many people did you say? 590,000? 500, 500, 576. Oh, damn. That's pretty good. I think I actually, it's closer to 577. 
Um, and it is the least populated state, yeah. Wyoming. Bro, Wyoming is like the, the, potentially one of the sickest places I've ever been. Jackson Hole's in Wyoming, right? Yeah. You been? No, but we're thinking about either going there or Montana. Oh, nice. Yeah. You should go to both. If you were to pick one first, I know there's a ton of variables. Jackson Hole is like, and I, I might not just, I might not be in control of Montana well enough to speak on this, but Jackson Hole is like easy. Uh, you might pay more to do stuff there potentially, but like there's flights, uh, it's kind of easy to get to. And while it's like really naturey, it's still like friendly for a visitor and it's like kind of bougie. You know what I mean? Um, it's kind of a crapshoot out there. Cause it's like, those are the Republican States where it makes sense that they're Republican States. Cause there's no one there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at its core, a Republican government is a smaller, it's just a smaller government. If there's 19 people in a state. They don't need a clunky, democratic uh you know government potentially it's not like new york state where there's 87 million people every five feet it makes sense why you know a state like that's republican but it's not the same the republican that like liberals think of when you think of republican it's like you have a gun because there's a fucking polar bear in your backyard not actually a polar bear you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so anyway jackson seems to be pretty hospitable for like uh, East coasters, you know, if, if since you're getting your your beak wet here, dipping my toe with with traveling, bit. you will be shocked at how fucking beautiful it is, dude. It is breathtaking. I'll never forget the first time I took a road trip with Benny D. We might have to get him on the show one day to, to talk about this road trip. This is the most ambitious road trip I've ever taken. Um, friend of mine, uh, their kid had an internship in California, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we could just ship his car, but we know that you." are like kind of into to traveling and stuff. And this sounds like a fun thing for you to do. What if we gave you money to drive the car? Whatever you don't spend on the trip, you keep and, uh, you know, have a great time in, in the process. And I was like, okay. And I was kind of just like OCD about like trying to get ahead as a comedian because at the time, you know, I was probably making $25,000 a year total all in teaching tennis, everything. So I'm like, I, I can't afford to not be here hustling because I don't make any money and I'm, struggling mm-hmm. so i was like i want to do this road trip in five five days or something it was cra- it was just a crazy undertaking uh but it was the first time i'd ever driven out west and i remember just being absolutely shocked by it so to me like the underappreciate the most underappreciated parts of america to people who aren't from those areas because you obviously you would know about it or you take it for granted uh is like and from from around here, I don't know that many people who go to these areas, but like South Dakota and South Dakota is a wonderful gateway to getting out there. You drive across these rolling hills. There's amazing shit in South Dakota. The Badlands, one of the most underrated national parks. Uh, there's all this cool shit around Mount Rushmore. To me, Mount Rushmore is sick, really lives up to... Uh, to the the hype. There's this money laundering operation. There's all these uh, conspiracy theories about the crazy horse statue that's taking forever to build. It's like on private land. It's this huge statue that's going to be sick if they ever build it. Oh, there's, wow. there's all these conspiracies about it. Um, I what, forget specifically, but... Do you know any of the little details? Yeah, like... like some, I'll look it up on YouTube. Some guy started it videos. and then his family, he, he passed away. He wasn't able to finish it. His family took over and the, there's all this shit. If you, if you read, if you're interested, it's an interesting thing to read about. Uh, and while you're driving on this highway for like 400 miles, you see signs about the store wall drug that's coming up wall drug wall drug i think that's what it's called and by the time wall drug is finally there you're like dude i i gotta go here like Mm -hmm. i'm brainwashed now to think that this is the greatest thing in the world Mm -hmm. uh and it's just like kind of like a tourist outpost but it's pretty cool but from there you then end up in wyoming and you're just like what the fuck wyoming montana parts of idaho colorado like these are just like mind-blowingly unbelievable places uh that you need to see you know what I mean? If you're like planning your next trip and you're like, oh, maybe we should go to France. Maybe we should go to, to me, bro. We got it here in America. Go, go support America. Go see some of this shit because it's sick. Alaska is another one that fucks me up because like, I remember being in Alaska and just looking at the map and realizing how far North I was and being like, what the fuck, dude? It is the southernmost parts of Alaska are nor- more Northern than any settled part of Canada. That's how far up there is. It's, it's pretty crazy. Do people live in, Northern Alaska? 1% of Alaska is inhabited. 1% of the land in Alaska is inhabited. Wow. It is a massive, gorgeous, just an unbelievable place. They actually pay you to live there. You make, I think, 2000 bucks a year 
if you if you live in Alaska. Uh, it ain't much, mm-hmm. uh, and it's also weird culturally. Like they like develop NBA players. Like a lot of NBA players have come from Alaska. What? Yeah, I'll look it up. How? Carlos Boozer. He was a big player. Mario Chalmers, Miami Heat. These are guys player. are from Alaska. Yeah, guys from from Alaska. They're from there. Yeah, that's wild. Um, JT Thor, Deshaun Nix. He's mm-hmm. on the Rockets. But there's like it's a long that's, list that's of players. That's a long list. Um, I I don't know the details. I'll find it. I'll post it on the story. But like there is some there lot, something yeah. special going on there in the high school development stage. Very cool. I thought it was interesting. That is very very cool. I really um, think that. So, dude, yeah. So, I, I recommend going up there. So, anyway, dude, this story is kind of good. I, I I feel like we should dive into it a little bit. I forget where we were going with this, but just remember, Ryan, you may be a turkey if you haven't seen enough of the world by a certain time. I guess we're 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 playing around with what the proper timeline is for what that is, but I know you, my friend. The clock is ticking. I know. I wanna. I wanna. <laughs> I wanna do good by you, Julia. We gotta get you out there. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I have been to 22 states. That's pretty Victoria good. Victoria was listening to last week's episode and she was screaming. She's like, you've been to Arizona. You've been to Arizona. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I've been to Arizona. Um, and I've been to Tennessee. 22. 22 states is solid. 22 t- We got to get you, get you, get you out there. Counting. Okay, and counting. And um, counting. Okay, so quickly, I'm going to tell you about this road trip. So I had never done a road trip. And it's amazing. Like I've really dove headfirst into travel and like learned things that – should be obvious or maybe if I plan better, but I, I have no problem with the fact that I learned as I went, but there are certain things that I learned. So first of all, I had, I think five days to do this road trip. We'll, we'll break it down specifically. Um, but as a non-commercial driver, I think I did one of the furthest drives of anybody that I've ever met. I drove from New York city to St. Louis, the scenic route through West Virginia, I think it was ju- the route we took was I believe one thousand and ninety seven miles. Mm. I drove it in one shot uh, because I had been to a lot of the Midwest, and I'm like, I want to get past all this so that we can spend more time in these other places that I'd never been. I'd been to Indiana, I'd been to Ohio, I'd been to like a lot of these places. So I'm like, I don't want to spend two days doing this. I want to just get there because we only have a few nights, a few days, a few nights to do this. So one shot meaning you didn't stop to sleep anywhere. No. Okay. It took 18 hours <laughs> and we drove overnight and I'll never forget as the sun's coming up in like Indiana, the Indiana area. Cause like during that drive, you're kind of like lightly touching in a couple of these States. Like you kind of go through Indiana for a second. You kind of go wherever till you get to Missouri and drove through West Virginia through the night, like, which is pretty cool too. Um, anyway, we're seeing, there's all these like mini tornadoes and shit. I know we were talking about weather mm-hmm. uh, and you know, it was really like inclement weather. It was challenging. And I'm just sitting here. Benny, of course, forgets his license or loses his license or something and doesn't. So now I I drive the entire way to his credit. He didn't sleep at all pretty much for the entire time. So he was a good companion, but would have been nice if you could have fucking driven. Anyway, we we get to Missouri (laughs) at like 10 AM. We, uh, enjoy some barbecue, go check out the St. Louis arch. And then we drive on to try to get, you know, as close as we can to, getting through this road trip as fast as we can. So I think the next night we go to Omaha, Nebraska, spend the night there. Beautiful. It's a nice city. I think that the the Warren Buffett effect has trickled down to making it into a nice city. I think Berkshire Hathaway is is located there. So from there, we're like, all right, let's go, I guess, to Yellowstone now. <laughs> we're kind of planning on the drive. So then that's another beastly drive. We have to sleep a little bit, so we kind of get started late. And at some point, dude, we're driving through the outskirts of Yellowstone. We're not actually in the park, but we're on the out and dude driving that at night is really fucking scary. And I think the guy who, uh, we were in Nebraska with the doorman, we'd ask him if he knew where we could get some, some weed potentially. I don't think I used any of it, but he was able to get us tincture. Do you know what tincture is? Yeah. He got us some tincture before like edibles were that popular. It's a liquid you put on your tongue. So Benny took a bunch of tincture and now he's bugging out in this drive. There's deer <laughs> light leaping. There's wolves. There's elk. We're like freaking out. And we, dude, it, so that's one lesson I've learned. Don't drive so in some of these places at night. It can really be like a fucking video game. Like the amount of animals that were running around, uh, really dark, really scary. We find this like little shack. And it was really serendipitous because we get there and 
we go to the bar at the hotel. There's all these like Native Americans hanging out in this like little lodge place. This You wouldn't have been able to find this place on hotels.com. I've learned now the move is to book where you're going to go that night and don't over, and I said this on the last episode, but don't try to do too much. Don't try to drive too far. A couple hundred miles a day is maybe the most you should be doing unless you're a psychopath like me. So anyway... Uh, this last call at the bar, we're able to order a couple of drinks. I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm like, well, let's order two each. They're like, it's cash only. I go over to the ATM. There's just 60 bucks sitting in the tray of the ATM. Beautiful. I'm like, dude, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was like smoking rooms. So like we baked it out, baked out the room, fucking spent the night, went to Yellowstone for the first time the next day. It was so sick. And this is, this is funny because at that point, Benny's like, dude, we should buy some fireworks. They're legal here, whatever. We buy a bunch of fireworks. He's a pro with fireworks. He's showing me how to use it. I've never used fireworks in my life. He then realizes, he's like, oh, dude, it's my boy's birthday tomorrow. He's having a party. I haven't seen him since college. It's in northern Montana, but why don't we pull up and surprise him? It'll be awesome. And I'm like, okay. At that point, a 500-mile detour doesn't seem like a big deal. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we, we go up there, we surprise him, it's crazy. We end up having this crazy night. I think we got in a fight. Like some tree was down, we couldn't get home, we couldn't find where we were going, we didn't have service. It was a complete nightmare. I find out my girlfriend cheated on me. Like, <laughs> dude, it was a fucking crazy night. And then uh, from there, we drive to uh, Portland, Oregon. And then the, the following day, I drove myself to San Francisco. How crazy that is to do in that amount of time is insane for anybody who's road tripped. So I don't recommend it. But it's funny because my friend whose kid I was going to visit, who was also my friend, was like, wow, that sounds so sick. We should road trip on the way back. That sounded so fun. I'm like, okay. At some point during that road trip, I had to change the tires too. If you drive like 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, whatever, you need to like change your tires apparently or something. I don't, I don't know specifically the amount, but the tires have maybe already been worn down a little. You did that? Yeah. Got the tires changed. Did your dad teach you how to do that? Uh, no, no, no. I didn't. Well, I know how to change a tire. I learned in auto class. Oh, okay. But I went and had to buy new tires, and they did it for you. It was like included. That's kind of sexy, dude. I know. That's another cool thing about me. No, I mean, so anyway, uh, I then do the road trip back with him. We take a different route. It was super sick, but I, the, I had the fireworks still. I didn't know how to use fireworks, and that's when I started the wildfire and got arrested. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's the origin story. That is sort of like Star Wars episode one through three. If the fire <laughs> story is episodes four through six. Yeah. I think the firework episode is the very first, maybe the second episode of Oops. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. I remember listening to I've it. I've talked yeah. about it a couple of times, but you know, there's so many different ways to look at it. It's like World War II. You can talk about so yeah. many different angles. My favorite part about it is that I did a yoga class that morning. We stayed in like Deer Valley in Utah at this sick hotel. I'm doing yoga. And then later that evening being arrested for vandal- <laughs> public vandalism. Like I, that has to be unique. You know what I mean? Never happened. How many times has an arsonist done yoga that morning? I Probably not that often. Um, but anyway, dude. Yeah, it, it was crazy and I learned a lot and don't play around with fireworks <laughs> because mm-hmm. it can really fuck you. Was this the same trip that you were paid to drive out for or was that separate? So they exactly? re-upped it on the second trip. He's like, hey, he wants to do it. He wants to do it with you now. He heard about how cool it was. Uh-huh. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. What well, do you want to do it again? Same deal. I was like, sure. So Did you have any money left over? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. I made a couple bucks on it uh, and it was great. You know, getting arrested sent me back. Uh, but they were nice enough to cover most of my expenses for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was nice. And what was the, uh, door to door? How long was that journey? So the first one, let's, let's do the math here. Not the math, but let's add it up. So St. Louis night one, Omaha night two, outside of Yellowstone night three, Montana night four, Portland, Oregon night five. So five nights Ma- madness. Mm-hmm. The way back we did Lake, Lake Tahoe, Deer Valley, Utah, the Stanley in Colorado, which is where they filmed The Shining. Pretty cool. Then uh, stayed at somewhere in Iowa. I forget specifically. Either Iowa City or Des Moines. And then from there straight back to New York. Hmm. So even less, but that was a more direct route. Um, I love road trips. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, so we had a, a question here uh, in regard to travel. This is not a travel podcast by any stretch of the imagination, but I think you got to keep saying that kind of been in on, each episode. On saying, this is not a travel podcast, <laughs> but as we slowly we mold into one. Uh, no, no, we're not. We, but, but it's fun to talk about this shit. Okay. So this is the question. Um, 
So I take it that this person's a foreigner because they said, I was wondering something about Americans. Um, why is it that so many Americans don't know geography? Like some Americans can't point to a single country on the map besides America. What the hell? That's maybe a little dramatic. But she goes, side note, uh, me and my boyfriend love the Afghan series. Quality's so good. The editing's so professional. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, they're from Norway. Um, okay, so I, I thought about this a lot, and I actually think that I have a good answer. So Americans know about their regional geography the same way that people in Europe do. But if you think about it like this, somebody in Europe will know other Europe, but I, I suspect that it might be more difficult for a pers- the average person from France or Norway to point out, for example, Azerbaijan on the map or Afghanistan or fucking Malaysia. Like, do, do people know that Malaysia is in two or three different, I don't, I don't know specifically, but there's like Borneo Island and then there's also like mainland Malaysia. Like, do people know that? Like, I don't know. So I think that it breaks down to like a regional thing. Whereas, you know, you in Norway, you know where, you know where Denmark is, you know where Finland is. Maybe because in Scandinavia, people are operating in the future. Like, it's just like utopian society in a lot of ways. But like, I wonder if people from Norway could point out, you know, Namibia or wherever. Maybe that's an extreme example. So my point being, I from New York and other people from New York can point to Pennsylvania. They can point to Delaware. They can point to Maryland, Virginia, Florida, but they might have trouble with Oklahoma uh, and Idaho or Iowa, Kansas. Like I really just think it's your nearby geography. That is what geography, you know, because Europe is small. There's a lot of countries, but it's small. Uh, Whereas the U.S. is massive and it's also isolated. It's not near other shit. So like an America could tell you where Mexico is. They could tell you where Canada is. They could tell you where a lot of states are. But then in Europe, it becomes a little more complicated because it's just far as fuck away from us. You know what I mean? Uh, So I don't think Americans are stupid. I think we're just isolated and it's harder for us to get places. Therefore, we don't know about them as much. I think that's pretty fair. That's a fair hypothesis, right? I couldn't give a better answer. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for listening to the pod. Oops, the podcast. Send us your emails. Send us your thoughts. Uh, what, what do you want to hear more of? What people do you want to see on the pod? Um, I think we've pretty much settled into the format of we're going to have a boys episode and we'll have a guest episode and kind of feel it out as things develop. Um, you know, we love you all. Thanks for the support. Love hanging out with you uh, for this hour and kind of taking a deep dive into our lives and what's going on. So we're going to keep grinding, bringing you a good product. Uh, so just keep tuning in and keep supporting us. Um, you can find me at not Julio. Ryan is at Ryan is really polite. Um, at oops, the podcast. I think I said, oops, the podcast at gmail.com Buy merch. Oops, the uh, and go to not Julio.com for live show dates. Like I said before, Michigan soon, then Seattle, Florida, more stuff coming down the pipeline too. See you soon. Thanks guys. Guys, fresh merch drop is upon us oopsthepodcast.com shop through your favorite styles right now we have hats t-shirts all inspired mostly by stuff that happens on the show got the oops deli tea which you'll notice some little sprinkles in there a couple of references that you might recognize as well as the plant boy tea in black and white both fire uh and the big gt as well as the oops og logo uh get in there we're gonna have more stuff coming down the pipeline soon uh but you don't want to miss out on this while they're still while they're still around oopsthepodcast.com grab some fresh merch